Well, good morning, good morning. Hope everybody's doing well in Arizona and other parts around the country. This is the channel where we take a quick look at the Arizona numbers and see if we can spot anything unique. And why am I not broadcasting outside tonight, today? Because, well, it's 41 degrees out there. <laughs> Fall is in the air up here. Uh, it's supposed to be a beautiful day, 65 today. Uh, very scenic. I'm probably going to be out with my camera having a good time. And then tomorrow we're supposed to have 20 people over here and have a little get together with friends and past classmates and we have a 58 percent chance of rain so it's going to be interesting we were kind of hoping we could do some things outside we may you never know up here so anyway welcome welcome so let's take a look at the seven day moving average shall we um it's pretty consistent we have 7200 homes on the market which is uh this is actually the first week in almost a year where we haven't dipped below 7,000 units in listings. And it's not because buyer traffic has backed off. You can see the buyer traffic has been consistent since Memorial Day. If you look in the frenzied market here, which is April and May, that was pretty brisk. This was just brutal. If you were buying a home, you were being outbid five, six, seven times. And then Memorial Day dipped. Then inventory started to come up. After about June, you can see here that the sales numbers, homes under contract, dipped. And it looks like a huge dip, but it's not. It's about 300 homes. That's about it. We are seeing consistently more homes come on the market. And there's a couple blips here and there where sales have gone up, um, you know, but not much. You know, this is 3,830. This one, uh, the next day as it rolls forward is about 3,800 again, 3,832. And so you can see that sales have this steady line now going ever since uh, the first part of July till now. What's changing is inventory starting to increase. But as encouraging as, encouraging as that can be, it's not enough to have an impact on pricing. So what is going on on pricing? Well, right now, and I'm going to try and share this screen, but it's going to be a little difficult to read, but I'll, I'll put it up just for, just for giggles. But it's... Um, um, the Cromford report comes out with their projections on pricing and they don't project out very far. So they tend to only project out like maybe a month. And so what they're saying for the monthly period ending September 15th, we're recording a, recording a price per square foot of 252.70 across all of the MLS database. This is up 0.8% from the previous month. Our forecast mid-range point was 253.65, so we're experiencing a 1.5% rise and saw only about half of that. They were expecting that, not experiencing it. However, the result was well within our 90% confidence window. So now what's going on? They're saying that pending listings for all areas show a price up 1.5% from August. Among those pending listings, we have 99.6% normal 0.1% in REOs, which is foreclosures, and 0.3% in short sales and pre-foreclosures. The short sale and pre-foreclosure percentage is higher than last month, but still extremely low by normal standards. So they're saying this, that they are going to say that in September, we are going to be up 1.4% higher than August, and they have a 90% confidence rate and they expect it to start to have a slight increase. It says prices have been pretty flat for the past three months, but we're likely to rise once more during the fourth quarter. So there is a chance that we're going to start seeing prices kind of go up a little bit in the fourth quarter. Uh, we don't know yet. It's showing us that uh, as long as inventory remains, remains low, you're going to have prices increase. There's no getting around with it. I have a question here from Bryce. Is what's your experience with asbestos in homes and how sellers and buyers can better inform and protect themselves when shopping for older homes? Um, good question, Bryce. Many of the older homes, um, if they do have asbestos, some of them is just in the ceiling um, and it's been painted over and coated. And there are companies that can come in and remove it. My experience, I've only had one home in 12 years that actually had asbestos and it was in a closet. 
up on the ceiling. And you know what? The buyer wanted it removed. Um, I thought it was kind of no big deal, but some of the older homes do have it. So your inspector will point out how much asbestos is in the home and where it is. And then what you need to do to, to rectify that. I don't see any asbestos in Gilbert Chandler Tempe, but mostly downtown, some of the historic areas and stuff like that. So um, the other the other thing that we're looking at here is there's an article um, that says that the FHFA suspends the second home limits. Now that was where the uh, FA, FHFA limited and said um, that they can't have more than 7% of their portfolio in second homes, like vacation homes. We weren't sure how this was going to shake out, but it ended up being a very big nothing burger in the Valley. So while we thought that it was, you were going to have some loan limits, these lenders figured out how to work around it. And now they're removing it. So that's a good thing. Uh, Betta here says we're looking in the 5750 price range and the homes are not being maintained. We found the nest of mice in a desk drawer. That's the fun thing about real estate is all surprises that you get. <laughs> you never know what you're going to see. But that's not necessarily a, you know, it can be viewed as a bad thing. But if you're in a market where it's brisk and there's bidding wars, you get into that perfect home, everybody's going to want it. If you can overlook some of that stuff, and offer them a price that's below their list price, and you're willing to fix all the imperfections, it's an easier market for you. So, but um, yeah, it'll surprise you. Um, the lack of maintaining of homes that people do, <laughs> it's just unbelievable out there. Now, the um, thing I wanted to share this morning is Redfin, you know, they, they gather a lot of data, and they came out and, and uh, said that uh, our home buyer bidding wars are dropping off. And uh, here they are. Um, we're looking at, uh, I'm going to make sure I go to the right screen here, showing that Tucson is 68.4% of the homes right now in July and uh, were over list price. But look at it now, 70.5% uh, in August compared to 51% last year. You get down here to Phoenix and Phoenix is 59.5% versus 61.5% last year. Uh, they went up from last month. So the bidding wars are still out there in Phoenix Metro. Um, not so much in some of the other markets, but they're coming down slightly. Um, we see more of the indication that we're getting relief when we look at the Cromford data. And I see that where we were tracking about 64% of the homes were going over list price. Now we're down to 52. Instead of the uh, overbid being an average of 20 to 25,000, we appear to be averaging about 13,000 now. So that's a good thing. So as long as it's trending in a direction to where the bidding wars stop, I think that's a good thing for buyers. It's not a bad thing for sellers either. Now, if you're trying to compete um, in massive bidding wars, one of the best things you can do is ask your lender to go ahead and submit your loan into underwriting. So in other words, getting pre-approved, but getting underwriting to pre-approve it. So you can get pre-approval is where the lender just goes over your documents and says, yeah, you look good. You could probably buy something for this amount. Underwriting does a deeper dive. And so that's a much stronger offer. That tells the seller that you've already gone through the hard part of getting underwriting to take a look. Because that's usually where they come up and go, well, we need this bank statement. We need that tax statement. And uh, so that can... That can make your offer very strong, help you compete with cash offers. So that's something to take a look at. Now, what another thing that Redfin was saying here was that um, there are some markets that are seeing significant declines in, uh, in, in bidding wars, and they're basing it on their agents. So the one that's uh, really getting killed right now is Raleigh, North Carolina. They went from 46.2% uh, last year and now they're at 86.7 so they are getting slaughtered when it comes to people people uh, offering homes over list price in our market when i look at the cromford index uh i'm seeing phoenix go down the cromford index is a uh, uh, analytical tool and that means that it's getting more to a more balanced market i saw gilbert go down and now it's going steady it's not moving Chandler starting to creep up a little bit slightly, but Chandler's still going to be pretty brisk. Tempe has tanked, and Tempe's getting close to being a, 
a balanced market if you follow the charts that it might be balanced before November. Um, Fountain Hills, exactly the opposite. Fountain Hills is going crazy in favor of sellers. And uh, what's going to be interesting now is let's watch the over 55 areas in places like Sun Lake, Sun City West Trilogy as we start getting into the winter and see if we start um, seeing more, more brisk activity going on out there. Because the problem that we've had in those areas is that people are just not listing their houses at all. Sun Lakes normally has 85 homes and they have 25. So uh, we do need those numbers to increase. So if you're out of state and you own a home in one of these over 55 areas, list that bad boy and get that thing sold. So uh, I'm gonna hook up with Pat, the lender tomorrow, uh, not at three o'clock. We're gonna do something in the morning, probably around this time. So watch for that. I'm interested to find out what's going on in the lending world this week. Till then, everybody have an absolutely fabulous day. See you tomorrow.